So now we want to look at sentence diagramming. Diagramming is a way of taking a sentence apart to see how all the different pieces of the sentence work with each other. So essentially what you end up with is you draw a picture of the sentence that represents how all the pieces fit in. Now, the very, very basics of sentence diagramming, um, we want to understand the parts of speech. So if you're already reasonably familiar with the parts of speech, uh, we can go ahead here. If you're not totally familiar with the parts of speech, it may be worth your while to go and uh, look at the videos on the parts of speech because we're going to be using that vocabulary a whole lot uh, during these lessons on diagramming. So be sure that you're clear on what the parts of speech are and then diagramming is a way of showing how each of those pieces works. Now, the most basic fundamental structure in a sentence diagram is that you start with a single straight line. And this line represents the core of the sentence. This represents the main meat of it. And this line gets divided into two pieces. By a line, you'll see this line goes all the way through and that's dividing these two pieces of the sentence. The first piece of the sentence is going to be the subject, and the second piece is going to be the verb. So, for example, I may start with a very, very simple sentence. I'm going to start with uh, the shortest verse in the Bible, actually, which was, Jesus wept. So, what we want to do then is we want to put these components of the sentence into our framework here. We have our subject is Jesus, and we have our verb wept. And that's all there is to this particular sentence. There aren't any extra uh, bits and pieces in this one. Now, most sentences in English are going to have a subject and a verb. In fact, all of them are, but sometimes you can get away with leaving the subject out. Not very often, but once in a while. For example, if you're issuing a command, um, then you may be commanding somebody, and then the implied subject is you. So if I have the sentence, duck, that is a complete sentence. We don't see the subject, but it's implied that the subject is you. It's whoever is being spoken to, whoever's being uh, yelled at to duck. So if we look at the structure of that one, we have our subject is implied, you, and then we have our verb, duck. So once again, we have a complete sentence. Now, another key issue to remember is sometimes you have a verb that's got more than one word to it. Um, sometimes you only have the one word, like wept or duck, but sometimes there may be uh, a main verb plus some helping verbs. And so when you're looking for the verbs to put into your sentence diagram, you may need to be hunting for the complete verb. So for example, if I have fraud, has been detected. In this case, once again, we can set up our main st structure here, which is our subject and our verb. And in this case, our subject is fraud. And our verb is actually all three of these other verbs. We have detected, which is our main verb, and we also have has and been, which are helping verbs. So when you're diagramming the sentence, always be aware there may be some helping verbs you need to include. So in this case, I have has been detected as our verb. Now, 
When we want to get, get a little more complicated, if we want to have something else besides just our subject and verb, those components of the sentence are reflected as basically little dangly bits beneath, uh, so that it shows they're not part of the main sentence. The main core of the sentence is that subject and verb. For example, maybe you have some adjectives. Uh, suppose I have the sentence, an animated discussion took place. So, we're going to start with our basic structure of the subject and verb. And so what we see as the core of our sentence, uh, we have discussion is our subject. And then our verb in this case is, again, it's a two-word verb. This is actually a, what's called a particle. Uh, so we have took place, which counts as our verb. Now, we have two other words in the sentence that we haven't connected yet. We have an and we have animated. And so what we want to do now is look and see where do those pieces go. One of the things we want to remember is we're going to connect adjectives to the things that they, dis that they um, describe. So in this case, discussion is being described by these other two words. So we have little blanks like this that stick down beneath, in this case, the subject, to show. And so what we have is an, which if we're looking at adjectives, this is one that's describing how many. And then we have animated, which is also an adjective. It describes what kind. And so now we have an animated discussion took place. Now, we can also add adverbs to the sentence in a similar way. So if I start with Oliver cried lustily. So once again, we start with our basic framework, and we look at our subject, Oliver. We have a verb. This time it's just one word. It's just cried. And now we say, OK, we have this word lustily. Lustily describes cried, and so it's an adverb. It actually describes how Oliver cried. He cried lustily. So in this case, we have an adverb tucked in underneath our verb. Or, as I've mentioned, adverbs are slippery. They can modify verbs, but they can also modify other things. They can modify adjectives. They can modify other adverbs. So I might have, if I have a sentence, um, a mostly happy ending, was desired. So. What we want to do now is, once again, we'll take our basic structure, and we fill in our subject. In this case, the subject is ending. Our verb, once again, we have a verb that has a helping verb. So it's was desired. So now, what we want to do is figure out how to put these other two words in. What we have is a which is defining how many endings, in this case one, a, an ending. Um, and then we have an adjective, happy. And 
we have this adverb mostly. Mostly is actually modifying happy. It's describing to what extent is it happy. So that makes it an adverb, and it's modifying an adjective. So it's actually going to go right here, below happy, and we have mostly down there. So adjectives and adverbs, you'll see each time you're connecting them to the thing that is being modified.